Hey friends, welcome to Worship with First United Methodist Church, a church that's on the move for Christ here in Winchester and Frederick County, Virginia. My name is Sean Devlis, the pastor here at First, and I'm excited for us to worship together online today. A couple of things you should know. First, we're pre-recorded, so you'll see us in different places, some nice different outfits throughout the service, but it's a really cool way for you to know what it's like to worship with us in person and also meet a bunch of the people that make up the life of our church. We're beginning a series on the book of Hebrews this week, and we'll be talking about uh, All Saints Sunday, as well as what it means to, to run the race and to persevere in our faith. And so as we do all that, know that you can like, comment, or share, whether you're with us on Facebook or YouTube. Let us know where you're worshiping from today, uh, any prayer requests you might have. It's a great way to see how the Spirit brings us all together. So as we do this, as we spend this time and enjoy this time together, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning, I'm Randy Moulton, and this morning I'm reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses one through three. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
Hey again, friends, if you missed it at the beginning, my name is Sean Devilites, I'm the pastor here at First United Methodist Church. And today we're starting a worship series called Brewing Faith, where we're looking at the book of Hebrews in the Bible and seeing how this letter that is written to a community of second generation believers can inform our faith in Christ today. This week, as we do that, we remember how our beliefs are supported by the community of people that care for us, that care about us. And we ask ourselves, when we reflect on those people and who they are, how does that deepen our faith and how does that allow us to persevere in our faith as well? Will you pray with me? Living God, we give thanks today for the great cloud of witnesses that have led us to this place, wherever that place might be, on this day. Instill in us a sense of peace and awareness of the support that we've been given and encourage us to be carriers for that peace and support today as well. And bless this time they might learn more about you, more about ourselves, and more about each other. They might grow closer to you and one another as well. We love you. Amen. I'm glad you finally found something that you're good at.
These words from my mom were shared with me when she learned that I had made the bus for an invitational track meet in high school. You see, I made the bus because the month prior I had filled in on a relay for a guy who, I guess fittingly, had missed the bus to a league meet. It was a smaller one that we, everyone gets to go to, right? And I had done well enough, or the guy who I was replacing had missed enough meets, that I was to now be the fourth leg of a two-mile relay where everybody runs a half mile at a time. And you see, this is the reason I got to fill in this meet, right? Because someone else had missed a spot and I just happened to be the one willing to fill in on a relay when everyone else who was asked to do it suddenly had an injury or an illness pop up right in that moment. It was the strangest thing. So when coming home from practice, sharing this news, I was excited, right? Like this is a really big deal to me. And my mom had this gift, still does have this gift, for delivering encouragement in such a way that makes you go, wait, what? but also understand that you are in fact being supported, right? And you know, this running thing, uh, this journey that I'm on it is still going. And some, some of y'all have heard me talk about this a lot and I appreciate how many times you humor me in saying it again, but running is a part of my faith. It's a practice that works for me. And that's gone from the days of running a half mile at a time to the days now where I'm running a half marathon or more at a time. For me, there's just something about this idea of putting in effort forth, and an effort that sometimes feels like everything is clicking and coming together, and other times feel like the only thing clicking and coming together is a knee or an ankle, right? There are good days and there are bad days. And in putting that effort forth all at once, we are supported by every mile that we have traveled before and inspired by every mile that lays ahead of us. Also sometimes frightened or annoyed by what lays ahead of us, but I, I digress. It's because of that type of effort and the way that's associated with a journey and with running and with walking and traveling that we hear about this in our passage today. The reason why the author would think to use it as an illustration in our passage in Hebrews. And if you aren't familiar with the book of Hebrews, allow me to run us through some context. We're not sure who the writer of Hebrews actually is, but we know that they were extremely well versed in both the Greek language and in Hebrew culture. If you are familiar with Greek, which I am not, besides a few letters, you can see in the original writing just how nuanced and, and how things were like coupled together and it's almost like poetry in how this letter was written. And yet the person who knew to do that also knew the Hebrew culture really, really well. And the book of Hebrews also resembles a sermon in some ways, along with all that fun writing stuff, right? And it is how it's structured. And it proclaims the importance of Jesus Christ almost throughout the whole book. It is also, even with being like a sermon, like other New Testament letters, in that it is named after the community of people that it was written for, this people of Hebrew and Jewish heritage. The audience hearing it would have understood uh, and had a pretty good idea of what the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, said. And most of them were in a spot where they were second generation Christians. They understood and learned from people who had known Jesus, but they themselves didn't know Jesus. You can imagine the difference that that might be. And in the midst of that, they were now facing pressure to give up this faith because people had become detached from knowing someone who personally knew Jesus. You can imagine the struggle that's going on, right? So these folks who are second generation believers know they inherited their faith, that they would not have known Jesus on earth personally, and would be trying to reconcile all of that with this understanding that Jesus was supposed to come back, right? Jesus says he's coming back. Why isn't he back yet? And all the while they're doing that wrestling, they're facing persecution. They're facing treatment that is unkind at best and abusive at worst. And that pain is mixed with the tension of other folks who are supposed to support them saying, just, just give this up. Just come back to something familiar, this other faith that you knew before. Give up on this newer one because it must not be right. The writer of Hebrews then is writing to them to remind them that the stories and the, the witnessing that the folks they knew before, all of those stories were still legitimate, were still important, and those relationships mattered to them at this time. Perhaps you can remember a time in your life where you were pressured to give something up or pressured to give up on a dream or a goal that you had. 
whether you lacked that support, right, whether it was in a relationship or for a job or, or a task or, or even for some kind of belief, if you don't have that support, you know how overwhelming it can feel to try to press on, right? In other cases, we know that we're still striving to get to those things today and maybe the people have changed and the people that are supporting us now weren't there before and that makes such an incredible difference, right? But we know that in all this wrestling, there are moments where we have to make the conscious choice to persevere, to keep going, informed, of course, by people who, who show they care about us and do so in healthy ways and all these healthy things that, that need to be a part of the conversation. There are these instances where we have to choose to keep going with something if we want to see it through. Our faith is no different. And we're reminded today that our faith is something that we choose to hold on to. We're given that choice, that freedom. And holding on to our faith isn't easy. Again, this audience that this, was, this book was written for would have faced actual, like, physical persecution. They would have been beat up or, or, or treated in ways that they could have lost their business or lost their livelihoods in some ways because of their faith. And therefore, they face this frustration, too, of knowing that, hey, this Jesus guy, again, he's supposed to come back and fix all this. Why isn't he back yet? And so in the midst of all of that, in the midst of everything they're going through, the response that this writer has, that this teaching that, that he believes that God is sharing with them, is this insistence upon staying in community, valuing those relationships and trusting and leaning on one another to support them through these times. God just keeps insisting to us that we must remain in community. It's almost to an annoying degree, right? Like, God, sometimes I just kind of want to give up on this whole community thing. But it's part of our faith to be connected to one another. That's why this writer highlights community as integral to keeping up the faith and running the race to make in a space where our faith can truly brew within us enough that it can last and have the notes and the flavors that make it a story that changes lives. And further, what this writer reminds of, us of is that the reason we can do this, the person who makes it possible for us to believe that this God is making this possible, is in fact Jesus Christ. You know, a few minutes ago, I shared how running is important to me, right? Like I, that I might even call myself a runner. You also have traits and roles and, and jobs and hobbies that you would use to describe yourself, words you would use to describe yourself. What are those roles? What are those titles? As you think about that, think about two, who are the people that help support you in being this person? This person that's not defined by these things, right? Like we are more than that, but these persons that, that look to these things as little signs, little outward signs of the inward grace of being loved by God. Right? Little ways that we express ourselves, our identity, our personhood, all of those things that come together. Who are the people that support us in doing that? You know, according to Hebrews, every person who tells you, I am so good, you finally, I'm so glad you finally found something that you're good at, right? Every person who does that and, and we think about their story and we think about who they are to us, every person whose story brings a smile to our face or a nod or, or a look to the heavens or a tear because they're not here in the way that we want them to be here anymore. All of those stories matter to us. We're told by God that all of those stories are still important. They aren't lost. They are part of who we are. And so even when the people who taught us these stories, who told us these stories, who gave them to us, even when they aren't here, they still live on. That's his concept of this great cloud of witnesses. The, the stories that these second generation believers learned about Jesus and God from the people who were first generation believers, right? Those still matter. They still have worth. It is incredible, isn't it? That God weaved us together in such a way that the God of the universe is not only accessible to you and to me on our own, but is accessible through community. That our faith can be sustained through the stories we share with one another. That is the truth that keeps us going when the road becomes rough, when the weather around us becomes, I don't know, 
inclement, when, when the voices that, that have been cheering us on for so much of our life grow more and more distant, right? That is what helps us to persevere. The people that we hear about in the book of Hebrews, the ones that we're going to spend the next few weeks thinking of and reflecting on and seeing how their stories connect to ours, we think about how they have a, they're mixed in their past, they're mixed in their life experience, they're mixed in their lineage and their language, and yet what is consistent is that this call for them to trust and love one another, to hang on to one another, to hang on to God, is because the work that was done before is not yet finished. But the love that was being shared before is also not finished. That there's a baton being passed, just like in a relay race, and these stories they share were not shared in vain. They keep going because we know God keeps going, and therefore we keep going as well. And today we acknowledge that this race we run isn't easy. But we also acknowledge that we don't run this race alone or walk this faith journey alone. We acknowledge our need for God and our encouragement and hope that we need and we give thanks because we also know that God has given people in our lives. They have different titles and different roles and different connections to us. They're friends and family and neighbors and coworkers and classmates and, and everything in between. We give thanks for them today because it is that great cloud of witnesses that has made this space and this day possible for us. On the first Sunday of the month, when, we're, when we gather together in person, we celebrate communion. You'll hear a little bit more about that later when we first look to Jesus in that, right? Like we acknowledge that we fall short on our own, but by the grace of God and through the actions of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we can come together in community, acknowledging where we fall short and rising again to try again. We do that first, and then we also get to celebrate today on this All Saints Sunday, the great cloud of witnesses, those who have died, those who have gone before us to heaven. Remember that their stories are not dead. The stories they told, the promise that God made to them was just as true as the promise God made to Abraham and is just as, prom as true as the promise God makes to us today each and every day that we are loved, that we are of sacred worth, that we have an opportunity, no matter how weathered or tired or broken we feel, to remember that we are beloved by God. And that that title, that word, is one that we are gifted the chance to apply to ourselves and asked to apply to one another. So while we'll take time to, to do both of those things. We'll do that together as we worship online as well. We also get this do this practice together this week, right? And then here's what this practice is for us this week. To think about that great cloud of witnesses, to, to come up with three names of people that have helped us become the people we are today. The, the moms that said things along the lines of, I'm so glad you found something you're good at, right? The, the dads, the, the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents, the teachers, the neighbors, whoever, Whatever title they held, who are those people in your life? Because this week we are going to pray for those three people each and every day. And we're going to give thanks whether they're here or they're not here with us anymore. Because it is through that practice that we are reminded of just how connected we can be. Of how our stories do weave together and cross paths and link us in ways that are, are so easy for us to forget. Who are the people that are part of your great cloud of witnesses? And in what ways can we pray and give thanks for them this week? Because it's through their stories that we remember we can persevere. It's through Jesus' stories, remember, that we will persevere. And it's through the saints that we can say, thank God, even when we don't feel like we are good at life, we have found something good with life. Will you pray with me? God, we give thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity we have to worship together. And on this All Saints Day, we give thanks for the great cloud of witnesses that make our life possible, that makes the space possible for us. And so as we come together in the spirit of prayer and sense the connection with all those that have ever prayed before, 
You lift up the leaders of our community, state, nation, and world. We pray that you soften hearts so that we can remember our shared worth as your people. We pray for all those affected by COVID-19, for first responders, for those serving in roles providing care for others, for those who teach and who learn whether they have a degree to show for it or not. We pray that we have the courage to be hospitable towards others, to be an anti-racist people until racism is gone from this world. And we pray for those affected by disaster, both natural and man-made. We lift up those who use their voice to amplify, to make louder the voice of others who are oppressed. And we lift up all those serving away from home, those without homes, and those who could not be with us today. We commit ourselves to resisting evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves, and we pray for peace. We lift up Andy, Brian, Dorothy, Gary, John, Joy, Marlene, and others on our church prayer list. And Paul's now lift up others on our hearts and minds as well. God, for all these people, each and every one of these persons that we give thanks to you and ask that you continue to avail your love to them and to us in the ways that we do not understand, but also empower us, equip us, transform us, that we might remember their stories, remember other stories, remember our stories in ways that allow us to persevere and share your love in ways we do understand. We love you. Amen. Friends, at this point in our service, we get to worship together with our offering. And there's a couple different ways you can share your offering with us here at First UMC. You can go online to our website, to our giving page. That's a safe and secure option that we have. You can also bring your offering to an in-person gathering or mail it into the church during the course of the week. But know that for all the different types of offering we have, whether it is financial, whether it's with your time through different mission projects that we do or by volunteering as part of our worship services or, or however it comes together, and through your prayers, that all of those things help us to be the hands and feet of Christ in our community and help us to maintain the everyday work of our church, which Lord knows there is work that we get to do together each and every day and none of us see all of it. Maybe God, God sees all of it, right? Those things are made possible because of what we do right now through our offering. So whatever size of gift you think you're giving, know that we are grateful for you, grateful for what you have to share with us. And right now we get to celebrate these offerings as we join together in a musical offering.
Would you please pray with me? God of all generations, as we worship today, we offer our whole selves to you, all that we have and all that we are. Like your saints who have gone before us, we pray that you will help us be bold in our mission and in our witness. May we who have been given so much give freely, ministering in your compassion to the multitudes near to us and far from us, so that one day we may stand amidst the multitude that gathers at your heavenly throne. We pray this in the name of our Savior and Redeemer, Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, friends, as we mentioned earlier in the service, today is a Communion Sunday. Uh, we First UMC celebrates Communion on the first Sunday of every month. And while we do that in person, you get to hear about it in person when you're here, uh, something we want to make sure that we share online as well is knowing that this is a practice that is an outward sign of an inward grace. You know, we come forward and we confess our sin before God, and it's important to do that individually, but also together, because that's what it means to be a community of faith, right? As we confess those shortfalls and confess our need that we simply can't do all of life without God and without Christ, without the Holy Spirit, we then get to remember the meal in which Christ gave himself up for us. And the way that story goes is we know that Christ took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, and Christ also took the cup and gave thanks to God, gave it to all the disciples, and for both of those things, said, do these, share in these, in remembrance of me. So we get to do online right now. Part of the, the way our practice works is that it's important to be in person together. But know that in the coming days, when you share a meal with someone, that's another way to remember that God grants us this grace, grants us this relationship, and reminds us that we are of sacred worth. And so what we're going to do right now is join together the Lord's Prayer. And that's something that brings us together both right now as we worship together online, but also brings us together with folks who are sharing communion in person. So you pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we continue in worship today, we get to celebrate All Saints Sunday. And as you heard about a little bit before, we have a chance to remember those who have passed on in the last year specifically, and also all those saints who have been a part of our lives and our faith lives together. So now we light some candles in memory of those saints from First UMC who have passed on in the last year, beginning with Stanley Barnes. Reba Cooper. Chris Dunn. Barbara Jenkins. Marty Lapsevic. Nick Lapsevic. Freddie Snyder. Jess Stefanowitz. Shirley Stoltz. And now we raise a candle in honor of all those others that we named silently and aloud. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all these saints who ever worship you, whether in arbors or cathedrals, wooden churches or cement meeting houses. We give you thanks, O oh God, for hands lifted in praise, hands gnarled with age, hands stained with grease or soil, and hands that are manicured as well. They're all holy hands, God. And we thank you for these hardworking saints that left their mark for you and for us, and for our children to come. Thank you for the sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. And may their faith stories continue to inform our faith stories and guide our steps to come. We love you. Amen.
Friends, this concludes our worship service today, and we are so grateful and so excited over the chance to share and worship today on this All Saints Sunday. Know that in the next coming weeks, as we get closer to the holiday and the Christmas season, that you'll see information from us on our social media pages, on Facebook and Instagram, through our emails, through our website. Uh, the best way to keep up with all the different things we'll be doing is through all of those platforms. And so if you need help getting connected, you now you can get connected through Facebook or YouTube. If you just comment on the where you are worshiping right now, we'll be able to get connected with you. Or you can follow up with a phone call or an email. However might fit your spirit best today, right? We want you to know that you are welcome as a part of this community and that we value your presence in it. And now we get to go. We get to go still linked together as part of this community of faith to our different places, with our different roles, with the different words that we use to describe ourselves. And we are still all part of this great cloud of witnesses that have made this opportunity of worship that have made these spaces to exist possible. And so remember this week to pray for the people that come to mind for you in this great cloud of witnesses and how they link us to this God that is our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. And all of that truth, go in peace. Amen.